Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and on this channel, we talk about building your spiritual confidence so you can listen to your intuition and read your tarot cards with ease. And today we are going to be talking about the Page of Cups and I'm going to take you on a little journey to help you understand the Royal Arcana in particular of all of the uh, Minor Arcana and we're going to be looking at each card individually. And I'm going to show you a special trick with the elements that will help you to remember the meanings of the Royal Arcana a little bit better. So if you're a person that looks at the Page of Cups and thinks, I just do not know how to read this card, stick with me because we're going to talk about it in detail. And I'm really hoping that a whole world is going to open up in front of you in terms of this card. So we're going to look at the astrology. We're going to look at the symbolism. We're going to look at the color. We're going to look at tarot timing, Kabbalah. We're going to look at the astrology. We're going to look at the numerology. Uh, no, we're not going to look at the numerology because Royal Arcana cards don't have numerology but they do have a very deep um, expression of their meaning through elements. And I'm going to show that to you. So let's spin the camera around and talk about the Page of Cups. So the Page of Cups, Golden Dawn title, the Princess of the Waters, the Lotus of the Palace of the Floods. I love the Golden Dawn titles. They're absolutely gorgeous um, for these Rider Waite Smith cards and, in fact, for the Golden Dawn Tarot as well. The Rider Waite Smith Tarot follows the Golden Dawn symbolism. So, anyone that tells you that the symbol can be anything you like is not really giving you a good indication of how to learn the cards because the cards have been written very closely to the Golden Dawn symbolism, and that's what I use when I'm teaching you. So these are my tarot symbolism cheat sheets. They're available in my Etsy shop. I will make sure that there is a link to them down in the description box for you. Um, and of course, they consist of my basic cheat sheets and then my more detailed notes that I've written to help me do these videos. So the page is a really interesting card. Of course, we've got the placement on the um, Tree of Life of Malkuth and all of the pages sit on that Seraphot and the Seraphot is emanating energy out into the world and it's energy of the divine energy um, it's where spirituality takes form and we're talking about a completion of a journey so the minor arcana have been placed higher up onto the tree of life and we've talked about that as i've gone through the videos and of course i will talk about that more when we actually do my tarot for beginners course and i give you a really big orientation into everything so that you can then pick and choose what it is you want to study. So please look out for my Tarot for Beginners course. It'll have a workbook that'll give you d greater detail in what I'm talking about. But I wanted to, that course will actually be more than just, here's the Minor Arcana, here's the Major Arcana. It'll actually orientate you into the Tarot so you know what you're doing. Um, all right, so we're looking at the Hebrew letter of Heh, which is um, a letter that expresses the creative power of the universal energy and the feminine form of this letter. And we tend to talk about pages as being feminine, even though the figure on this card is clearly masculine. And I keep reminding you that the Rider Waite Smith is a product of its time when it was written. It was written in around about 1910. So we're talking about a very, very different time to where we are now. And so in learning the cards, it's important not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, particularly as any deck that you study will follow the Page of Cups. Follow the Page of Cups. will follow the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. I feel like the elements are where it's at to help understand these cards, but 
before we talk about the elements, let's talk about the astrology. Now, your traditional timing for cups is summer. And I've based that on books I've read, going out onto the internet and, and looking at what's out there and what people are talking about in forums and things like that. So essentially, if a cup lands into a timing position in a spread, you can just attribute the timing to being it will happen in summer if that's what you want to do. Um, you can also look at astrological timing, but you'd need to probably have a bit of a photographic memory to remember all the dates. You can, of course, use a cheat sheet, and I've got a cheat sheet for you with all the dates here, which you can also buy in my Etsy shop, and this is available in my astrological cheat sheets. And I'll make sure there, there's a link to those down in the description box for you. Um, so essentially, though, and you'll see this here, ace page timing. The ace rules through the page and they don't actually rule any period of time. They rule space. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I move these sheets over here, so I can refer to them in a minute when I'm talking about the meaning of the card, take immature but decisive action, act on your um, ideas. You've got the cups, which is about personal, emotional energy and taking and listening to your own creative emotion. Page of Swords, again, a very immature. And again, we're thinking about the hierarchy of the royal arcana from pages being very young through to the king having the ultimate wisdom so again young immature energy and then page of pentacles believing in your ideas and taking grounded action and each one of these cards the ace rules through each one of these cards and they sort of sit like that and I, again, I've got separate videos on each one of these. So they sit like that. Whoops. They sit like that. And if we have a look on the astrological wheel, and again, this is in my astrological cheat sheets. If you would like my cheat sheets, they are available in my Etsy shop. And I'll make sure the link to all the astrology um, graphics and and, and um and, and cheat sheets that I'm showing you here, I'll make sure that there's a link to those down in the description box and in the first comment for those of you who can't find it. So we've talked about the first quadrant here, which is the um, ace, the page of wands, um, the ace of wands ruling through the page for the first quadrant. And then the second quadrant of space is for the cups following Widdershins around the astrological wheel. So here we're talking about this quarter of space that is occupied by the astrological natal wheel of life. This is space that these cards occupy, not time. So there's no dates. We're looking at the period of time from Libra, um, Scorpio, and Sagittarius, those three signs. So essentially, you could say, well, it's that quarter of the year from the beginning of Libra through to the end of Sagittarius, if you wanted to. But if you want to be technically correct, it's it's ruling, it's ruling really a feeling or a space rather than being able to give time. So we would say if a card like the ace or the page turns up in a timing section of a spread, you'd have to say the timing is indeterminate because there are really no dates. If you want to know the dates and you want a cheat sheet, we've got this cheat sheet here and you can look up each card and there are dates for every single card other than the ace of cups ruling through the page of cups Rule space, not time. And you can see their placement is here. So let's have a think about the elements, which is what I think is the real, um, 
meaning, it gives you a real sense of the meaning of the card. So let's look at the elements of these four cards. So we've got the um, earth is the element for each one of the pages. So you've got earth and fire, earth and water, earth and air, and earth and earth. So earth and fire um, ignite one another. Uh, sorry, no, discount one another because if you pile soil on top of fire, it puts it out. So you've got a disruption there. Earth and water enhance one another. Think of pouring water on earth and things growing. Earth and air are separate to one another. So again, there's a disruption. And earth and earth work together to enhance one another. And so, of course, the meaning of these two cards in particular is really enhanced by the impact of the elemental attributions. And you can really see that in the cards. So if we're talking about... Um, the princess of or the page of cups and this is why in some cards you'll see the page of cups de described as princess of cups and that's going directly back to the golden dawn symbolism with the title being the princess of the waters of the lotus of the palace of the floods and so of course sometimes the page is actually depicted as a princess rather than a page so this idea of earth and water being together allows the princess to access her unconscious mind for ideas and creativity. And so this is expressed in this card. So if we look at the symbolism, the way the page is standing with feet out and arms out, this is suggesting an openness and optimism to ideas then you've got this tunic, which is resonant of the um, of the Golden Dawn title, uh, having li lilies, or you could refer to them as lotuses, onto the tunic, which is which represent beauty and purity and spirituality. Um, the fish in the cup is a symbol of happiness and prosperity. Um, and represents being focused on dreams and emotions. So remembering we've got an earth card here being enhanced by water. So you're being called into focus on your deepest, innermost, even childlike, remembering the princess being a child, childlike innermost emotions um, and ideas. Um, the wavy water in behind the page represents the, um, the waviness of ideas and emotions as they come and go um, through our body, not just our thoughts, but also somatically with the Im impressions and feelings that we have in our body as we come into contact with different things both inside and outside of ourselves that trigger our emotions. So the grey sky behind is about the fact that emotions are not always as they seem. So there could be some confusion there. And of course, remembering this is young, immature motion, emotion. This is not mature, um, considered, thought about, um, ruminated on, emotion that's been sorted through. This is young, immature emotion. Again, the golden cup, the golden um, ground is about spiritual awakening. Um, again, lots of blue symbolism in this card. Blue water is, of course, always about emotion. And here you've got a blue hat, blue scarf and blue tunic, all uh, connecting to head and heart and gut and this idea of emotions and spirituality being a person of high emotional passion. So that is your page of cups. I will be doing more videos taking you 
all the way through the pages and then, and we're nearly finished, our next suit will be the swords and we will start again at the beginning with the uh, Ace of Swords and I'll take you through all of the symbolism again as I have done for the previous cards. I really want to give each one of the cards justice. So many times people put the cards together and talk about them and I may do a series of videos on that too. Um, but I just wanted to separate them out for this series because I, I just feel like there's so much symbolism on each one of the cards to really not be able to do them justice when I talk to, about them all together. So if you love my video, don't forget to give it a like and, a, uh, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so you don't lose me and you get notified when I upload new videos. Don't forget to check the description box. I have lots of goodies, lots and lots and lots of freebies in my free membership community to help you learn the tarot. And of course, some things that are paid for too. And I will indicate all of those down in the description box for you. Please come and be part of my community. Connect with your deck.com forward slash newsletter. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.